who lost his dot. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, The alarm clock rang to the alphabet song. Little Eye sat up, stretched, and rubbed his eyes. <sighs> Last day of alphabet school! He saw his letter friends on the playground and hurried to join them. Whee! Little G gasped. <gasps> Little P pointed. Huh? And Little S stared. Little I, they said. Where is your dot? Little I looked up. He looked to the left. Huh? He looked to the right. Huh? But his dot was gone. Uh. What will you do without your dot? Little A asked. Little W whimpered. <laughs> Little H handed her a hanky. All of the letters crowded around Little I. Don't worry, they said. We'll help you find a new dot. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. The school bell rang. It was time to make words. All the little letters scrambled into school. But Little I's friends didn't forget their plan. When they got to the classroom, the letters looked around. Ooh. Little A asked, How about this acorn? <laughs> little B burst forward with a balloon. <gasps> oh! Little C cried, Try on this clock! <laughs> Little D dashed over with a donut. <laughs> Little E exclaimed, An egg is exactly what you need. <laughs> Little F followed with a flower. <laughs> Little G giggled when he found a gumball. <laughs> Little H handed over a hula hoop. Hmm. Little J joked, <laughs> How about a jumping bean? <laughs> Little K knew the answer. A kiwi. Little L lit the line with a light bulb. Oh. Mm. Little M made her way over with a marble. Oh. Little N nodded to a music note. <laughs> Little O opted for an oyster shell. Little P presented a pretzel. <laughs> Little Q questioned, How about this quarter? Ooh. Little R raced over with a ring. Whoa! Little S scared him with a spider. Little T thought a thumbtack would do. <laughs> oh. Oh. Little U urged him to carry an umbrella. Little V ventured forward with a valentine. Aww. Little W walked over with a wheel. <laughs> Little X's extra special idea was a xylophone mallet. Little Y yelled, Wear this yo-yo! Little 
little Z, always last, zoomed over with a zero. Oh, 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 oh. Little I tried them all on, uh, but nothing felt right. <laughs> when school ended, all the little letters went out to where their parents were gathered. Little I saw his father <laughs> hey, hey, Dad. and sniffed back tears. <laughs> I lost my dot. Oh. <laughs> Capital I smiled. No, little I, you didn't lose your dot. You left it on your pillow this morning. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> I brought it along, but since today is the last day of school, and you've grown up, I'm not sure you need it anymore. What do you think? Do you really think I'm ready to be a big eye? Capital I nodded. Stretch out your arms and point out your feet. Little I did. And when he saw his shadow on the ground, he smiled. Dad, I look just like you. I can start a sentence now. was a quiet colour. He enjoyed looking up at the sky. Oh! Floating on the waves. Mm -hmm. And on days he felt daring, splashing in rain puddles. <laughs> Every once in a while, he wished he could be more sunny, like yellow, lovely to meet you, or bright, like green, ta-da! More regal, like purple, oh yes, oh, lovely, or outgoing, like orange, hey -o. But overall, he liked being blue. Except when he was with Red. Ha! Red was a hothead. <laughs> he liked to pick on blue. Red is a great colour, he'd say. Red is hot. Blue is not. Then Blue would feel bad about being blue. <laughs> Sometimes yellow comforted blue. Blue is a very nice colour, she'd say. But yellow never said that in front of red. She never said, stop picking on blue. Green, purple and orange thought blue was nice too. But they never told red to stop either. Every time Red said something mean and no one spoke up, he got bigger and bigger and bigger. Soon Red grew so big that everyone was afraid of him. No one dared stop him. Red picked on all the colours. Then everyone felt a little blue. Oh. Oh. 
Until one came. <clears throat> he had a different shape, with bold strokes and squared corners. He was funny. He made the colours laugh. <laughs> Red saw this and got very hot. Stop laughing, he told Yellow. Stop laughing, he told Green. Stop laughing, he told Purple and Orange. <laughs> and they did. Red rolled up to one. Stop laughing, he told him. But one stood up straight like an arrow and said, No. Red was mad. But one wouldn't budge. So Red rolled away. One turned to the colours and said, If someone is mean and picks on me, I, for one, stand up and say, No. Then Yellow felt brave and said, Me too. <gasps> Green agreed and said, Me three. Oh. Then purple became four. Oh, and orange became five. Oh. Blue saw the colours change. He wanted to count. Oh. Red grew red hot. Ah, he felt left out. He grew hotter and hotter and hotter. Red raced over to Blue and said what he always did. Red is hot. Blue is not. But this time, Blue stood up tall and became six. <gasps> Red can be really hot, he said. But Blue can be super cool. Red, blue, a fuse. <laughs> and try to roll over blue. <laughs> but everyone took a stand and said, No! <laughs> Seeing them standing tall made Red feel very, very, very small. <gasps> then Red turned even redder and began rolling away. <laughs> Blue called out, Can Red be hot and Blue be cool? Red stopped in his tracks. Red can count two, said one. Red rocked and rolled and turned into... Seven! Everyone counts, they shouted. Then... Red laughed and joined the fun. Sometimes it just takes one. Where are you?
You by Jonathan Sunday. Where are you? Lounging in my nook, reading a good book. Where are you? Sitting on a cinder block, knitting me a winter sock. Where are you? Having a yummy plump plum with my lumpy stump chum. <laughs> Where are you? Riding George the gorgeous porpoise past enormous surging orcas. Where are you? Getting ready to slurp spaghetti with Freddy Gazzetti the sweaty yeti. <laughs> Where are you? Riding on the back of a giraffe gone quackers while snacking on a pack of alpaca shaped crackers. Where are you? Surfing on a blue spruce with old rusty McDoose, but my trusty goose noose feels a wee bit loose. A wee bit loof? Where are you, goof? Is? I'm here in this box, safe from hard knocks. Do you want to come play? Not right now. I'm afraid. We could snack on the way. I think I'll just stay. If the here where you are isn't the where that you want, don't sit where you are feeling glum on your bum. Get up and start working to change where you're from. Cause bruises and gooses and fears and excuses can't stop you from living the life that you choose, is. Is? Where are you? Oh, sorry for skipping the end of your speech. Had to rescue an Eskimo lost on the beach. Then I wrote a hit song about butternut squashes. Now I'm testing some specs on my rocket galoshes. Woohoo! Thanks for the boost. The end. Inside scoop on every type and use of poop. Peekaboo! I'm Professor Pip Poop Deck. Welcome aboard. We're exploring a substance that most have ignored. An icky poo subject folks don't care to visit. Quite putrid and shocking and horrid. Or is it? Ta-da! Poop is yucky. Poop is foul. Step in poop and you will howl. A fine specimen. To read this book, you must be strong. Just hold your nose and come along.
everyone poops. Yes, it's true. From aardvarks to the humped zebu. And every creature in between, it's simply part of life's routine. Kaka, <laughs> doo doo, boom boom, poo are baby's words for number two. Guano is an Incan word for poop of bat or ocean bird. Poop from critters is called dung, and monkey dung is sometimes flung. Look out! Oh dear, my helmet. Monkeys fling when under stress. It helps the monkey decompress. So if a monkey aims at you, duck behind a friend or two. <laughs> Your dog may bark to drop a clue. <laughs> needs to do her doggy do. <laughs> Look how tiny. Now poop pops up in many styles. From fly specks, ooh. <laughs> to great hippo piles. <laughs> hippo! Beautiful. <laughs> Rabbit pellets, raccoon tubes, owl whitewash, and wombat cubes. See? Everywhere you look. Camel poop is desert dry. Wet poop comes from birds on high. A thought to fill us all with dread. Oh, will that bird poop on my head? Look out! Drum roll, please. <laughs> Let's introduce the many ways dung is of use. The termites found above the ground poop to make a mighty mound. Dung beetles roll it into balls to gobble up when hunger calls. Ooh. Guess how critters who feast on fruits help these plants to put down roots. Inside a critter's poop might go as far as Guadalupe. Poop is helpful on the trail. Is it bear or is it quail? Some use poop to mark their scent and let them know which way they went. Poop deposits may convey. This is my turf. Stay away. Run! He means business. Poop 
enriches soil that's poor. Grow umpteen beans and greens galore. <laughs> if your crops are small and fewer, hey, farmer, have you tried <clears throat> manure? <laughs> Around the world, some folks you'll meet use dung for cooking and for heat. More s'mores? The Mongol yurt, a native shack, is often sealed with dung of yak. A Maasai tribesman proudly struts before a row of cow dung huts. Moose poop makes great souvenirs. Wear it dangling from your ears. May I have two, please? Some county fairs have just the thing. <laughs> A thrill-filled, skill-filled cow pie fling. <laughs> Wee hee ha ha! Look at that cow pie go. Now you have the inside scoop on every type and use of poop. Not merely gross, revolting, vile. Yes, poop can surely be worthwhile. Why should such wondrous stuff offend us? Poop is truly quite... Poopendous! <laughs> Hip poop hooray! <laughs> The very cold, freezing, no number day. Counting. We've been forgotten. Left out in the cold. No birthdays? No growing? No clocks? Unless we warm up, time stops. Quick, help warm us up. Count every number on this page and see what happens next. Melted. And we're a checkered mix of blue and green. We've stopped shivering, and new grass is growing. Keep counting. It's working. Five, six, seven, eight. Amazing. We're sunshine yellow and all kinds of things are sprouting. If you trace us gently and count us aloud, we'll warm up even more. Give it a try. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. I 
tiger striped orange. This time, after you count us aloud, give us a gentle flow of warm air. <sighs> Just to see if it helps. 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh my! Here's an idea. Try all three. Do you think you can count us out loud, trace us with your finger, and blow on us softly? Try it and see. 13. 14. It's working. Keep going. 15. You did it! You did it! We're red hot! You saved us all from a very cold, freezing, no number day. to turn four. All of my friends will come over and play. Then piles of presents will fill our driveway. We'll have a huge cake, and my buddies will say, your party was perfect. Hip, hip, hooray! Mikey's mom smiled as he finished his speech. Your plan is fantastic, my sweet little peach. But no celebration is ever complete until you've decided what you want to eat. Her statement stopped him dead in his tracks. <gasps> Food, of course. Every party needs snacks. Well, pizza is something that everyone loves, but tacos fit in your hand like a glove. Burgers and hot dogs are easy to eat, but pork and fried rice is such a nice treat. He needed a guru, a trusted grub guide. Maybe my grannies can help me decide. What food did you have for your birthday, Babu? In Hong Kong, Chinese food is all that we knew. Huh. Nona, do you know what food you would choose? My roots are Italian, so pasta can't lose. Oh. Chinese or Italian? Both are delicious. He remembered his cousin's birthday dishes. For the twins, rice and spice on their special day. While Joe had lasagna, he ate a whole tray. Yum, 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 yum. Mikey was stuck, not sure what to do. He couldn't decide between the two. Ravioli or dumplings? Linguini or lo mein? All of these options were hurting his brain. Focaccia, burrata, caprese, 
risotto, dim sum or wontons, or noodles and shrimp roe. His mind was a jumble of possible choices. He heard both sides of his family's voices. He rushed to the park to get out of his head. His best friend, Sophia, found him and said, Are you okay, Mikey? Why so much sorrow? I can't pick a dish and my party's tomorrow. Your mom is Italian, your dad is Chinese. You're free to choose food as unique as you please. Why not have both? Is that too outrageous? A Chinese-Italian mashup for the ages. <gasps> yeah! Sophia, that's it. I don't have to choose one. He bolted straight home. There was lots to get done. Huh. Mikey burst in the kitchen. I'm ready to pick. I've made my decision. This isn't a trick. I want fried rice and marinara sauce. That'll be different, but hey, you're the boss. <gasps> he awoke the next day in a jittery mood. Friends were arriving. Will they like the food? Mikey's mom fried up a wok full of rice. In went the veggies, two eggs, and some spice. His friends helped give the tomatoes a squish. They drizzled the sauce mm -hmm. to complete the new dish. Mm -hmm. Mikey tensed up as his friends took a taste, but the fusion of flavors lit up every face. Mm -hmm. oh, good. Despite any doubts, the meal couldn't be beat. The fried rice was savory, the marinara sweet. It tasted more scrumptious than they thought it could. The whole party shouted out, <laughs> Different is good! Yo! 
you're slow. <gasps> I'm fast. I'm tall. You're short. Huh? 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 Oh. <laughs> I have a lot. You have none. I'm dry. You're <laughs> wet. I'm awake. They're asleep. Our class is a family. When you think of a family, you might picture one in a house. A mom, a dad, a couple of kids, plus their dogs, and a pet mouse. Perhaps you think of grandma. or a stepmom and stepdad. It could be those 14 cousins. Or that twin who makes you mad. But family doesn't have to be who you're related to. It can be another special group who love and care for you. Have you ever thought about where most of your time is spent? It's at school with all of us. That's where all those hours went. So if our classroom is the place where we spend our days, why wouldn't we want to make it like a home in many ways? It's a place where we can show respect and kindness to each other. spot where we can be ourselves and make memories with one another. We'll have things in common. These are connections that we'll seek. But we'll still celebrate our differences and what makes us each unique. Our classroom is a special haven where it's okay to make mistakes. 
we learn from them and try again, no matter what it takes. We'll all have tough days sometimes, but your teacher is here for you. <laughs> and as long as you're a friend to others, your peers will be there too. Oh, ouch. In this classroom of four walls, we will stick together. We'll help each other learn and grow in any kind of weather. So let's always remember what a great team we can be. You have our back and we have yours. We're a classroom family. Love you for always. Do you like letters, little one? And envelopes to read? With notes and stamps from places fun, like cities or the sea. Then look up to the sky up high and squint your eyes to see the love note birds are on their way with words to you from me their wings are strong their flight is swift their plumes a brilliant hue and nothing stops their airborne gift my loving words to you. You could be in a towering grove and feeling lost and small. But through the trunks, we'll weave and wove to tell you to stand tall. You could be on a ship at sea where waves are fierce and fast. Swifter still my words will be. You're strong and you'll outlast. What about a candy bay where sugar seagulls call? Yes, that's sweet, but I will say you're sweeter than it all. Or if you're on a mountainside and climbing for the top, through every stride. You can, don't ever stop. And what about an inky blue and night comes where you are? Can lovebirds find their way to you? and give a guiding star. Oh, dearest one, it's hard to tell you everything you'll need. Here, at least, you have my love to read and read 
and read. Where you go, whate'er you do, have peace, be calm, be still. My love will keep surrounding you. It does. It always will. If you don't have books, what are you waiting for? It's a kid-safe, ad-free library full of storybooks that are brought to life. Ask your grown-up and start exploring more fun stories like these. Seriously, you have to check it out. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Books app for free today.